uh, <coughs> presenting on behalf of medicine for uh, language. So presenting a 40 year old male, a uh, daily wage worker who came with complaints of weakness of bilateral upper limb and lower limb since the past 14 days, dysphagia since the past two days. His uh, weakness in, was uh, had started in his upper limb, more towards his upper arm, shoulders and his upper arm, then later involved his lower limb also. It was more towards his shoulder rather than his uh, wrist. He was finding it, he was able to eat, uh, was able to mix food, but he found it difficult to uh, lift his hand above his head. He mentioned it as he used to go as a daily wage worker for painting. So he found it difficult to lift up his uh, pain bucket and painting uh, while climbing up on the ladder. Uh, his complaints had worsened over the past two weeks. Since the past two days before prior to arrival uh, towards us, he also complained of difficulty swallowing solids more than liquids. Uh, there was no history of any bowel bladder involvement. There's no history of any rash or joint involvement. There was no history of any fatigability. There's no history of any visual disturbance. He had no habits in personal history wise, no comorbidities, no history of any drug intake or there was no history of loss of weight, loss of appetite. Uh, recently, uh, for the same, he was recently treated outside with steroids and methotrexate with minimal to no, no improvement. On examination... Yes, what about other neurological symptoms? Other cranial nerves, tensor aid, what about sensory? No sensory, no positive or negative sensory symptoms. No other cranial... Apart from dysphagia, uh, there were no... Wasting, did you notice? I said uh, there was no wasting, there was swelling of the arms, bilateral upper arm. Uh, on general examination, his, he was hemodynamically stable on arrival. There was no pallor, ictus, sinusis, clubbing, or left hand uh, but there was edema of the uh, upper limbs, uh, upper limbs of the shoulder and the forearm. There was rolling of saliva. Systems examination wise, his cardiovascular examination, respiratory system examination, and abdominal examination were normal. CNS examination wise, he was conscious oriented to time, place, and person. His high mental functions were normal. Motor examination, power at the shoulder level was 4 by 5 bilaterally, elbow and wrist were 5 by 5, power at the hip, 3 by 5 flexion and extension, but 4 by 5 for adduction and abduction. Knee and ankle were 5 by 5. His single breath count was 12 and breath holding time was 10 seconds. His tone was normal and there was no wasting. His reflexes, upper and lower limbs were noted to be normal. Plantas were bi flexor bilaterally. Cranial nerves, gag was intact. Uh, uh, Uvula was central. Other cranial, nerve other cranial nerve examination was normal. Sensory examination was, there was no uh, sensory deficits noted. Cerebellar signs were negative. His gait, uh, he was, uh, I <laughs> mentioned it wrongly, he was not able to walk uh, because of the power. Skull and spine were normal. Clinical syndrome, acute onset, painful, symmetrical, progressive, proximal muscle weakness with trunkal involvement and pharyngeal weakness. I am saying trunkal is also because he found it difficult to sit by, sit up by himself and also turn from side to side on the bed. So. Differentials. Click the play button. Present. Previous one, that's why it's been. Now do it. Yeah. 
what did you say about cerebellar signs? Signs were not, <coughs> not present, sir. no signs of cerebellar dysfunction. So, he had the weakness severe enough that he could not lift his hands up. How do you check cerebellar signs? Sir, uh, only he is able to do mix his food, he is able to do other signs. Mm. So, to check this uh, side of the can so when there is significant motor weakness, this not make much sense. Upper limb is four by five. Shoulder is three by five, sir. Shoulder four by five. Only hip three by five. Only hip is three by five. Lower limbs are more affected. Yes. So then you should mention that you check the for this only in the upper limbs. Here, superficial reflexes. Superficial reflexes. Everyone thought we also thought in line of uh, muscle uh, weakness at the level of the muscles. The differentials were inflammatory. Uh, inflammatory myopathy and infectious myopathy, primary polymyositis, inclusion uh, body myositis, and last but not least, toxins and medications were also considered. So let's just briefly look at the approach to weakness. So in history wise, we had to uh, differentiate, uh, we have to write to differentiate between with the help of history and physical examination itself. So in case of involvement of diplopia, blurry vision, we have to consider myasthenia, gravis or diabetic neuropathy, dysphagia, we have to involve <clears throat> MND, inflammatory myopathy. Uh, if there's a facial nerve paralysis, we should consider uh, herpes zoster. For fever, arthritis, rash with the presentation of weakness, we should keep inflammatory versus infectious myopathy. A monoocular vision loss or bladder dysfunction should alert us towards a multiple sclerosis. Pain, we should think in line of uh, nerve compression, inflammatory myopathy, inflammatory neuropathy. Paresthesia, uh, in line of hereditary toxins or MS. Uh, Raynaud's phenomenon in case of uh, inflammatory myopathy. Physical examination wise, we in cardiac arrhythmias can be seen in inflammatory myopathy. Cholinergic toxidrome could be, uh, if there is cholinergic toxidrome with weakness, we should think of OP poisoning. And if the patient has a Cushingoid appearance, we should think in line of Cushing syndrome. If there is fatigable weakness with ptosis, then myasthenia gravis becomes more likely. Hyperreflexia, uh, then UMN lesion, hypothyroidism, or hypercalcemia. Hyperreflexia towards hypothyroidism and uh, if there is frailty, sarcopenia, skin bronzing, uh, skin bronzing, then hypoaldosteronism also can be considered. If there is a violaceous rash over the knuckles, daughter and spapules or a heliotropic rash or shawl sign, dermatomyositis becomes a likely option. So this is just a brief approach uh, towards like we can, how we can quickly localize towards what it could be likely. So if there is a UMN sign, it's most likely to be, you have to think whether it's acute or subacute. And if it's acute, we should think of an uh, stroke, uh, cerebrovascular but cerebellar, uh, cerebellar stroke. Uh, if it's subacute, we can also think of ICSOL multiple sclerosis. In case there is both LMN and UMN, we should think more in line of motor neuron disease like amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. In case of LMN findings or non-specific findings, now we have to be more specific. In this, in that case, if the uh, weakness is worsening with repetition, we'll think in line of myasthenia, or if it's improving with uh, repetition, Lambert-Eaton. In case there is a sensory uh, nerve deficit, now we have to think of neuropathy that will have both motor and uh, sensory neuropathy. Uh, while asymmetric weakness, we have to think in line of cord compression. Symmetric weakness, as our patient had, uh, it was a symmetric weak weakness. Now you have to think whether there is pain or not. If there is pain, now we have to rule out any medication intake, especially statins. And then if there are no medications that can be implied, now we have to further evaluate for inflammatory myopathy or an underlying uh, rhabdomyolysis and then go ahead with the, this thing. If there is no pain, then again, we have to evaluate for endocrine possibilities. So our patient investigations was hemoglobin was 14, total counts of 20,000, platelet was 89,000 with clumps, his uh, renal functions were normal, 
his AST, LT, and ALP were elevated with a CPK of 25,000 and a CRP of 56. So his EMG and CV had showed features suggestive of myositis. Investigations-wise, outside he had done an MRI spine. We had not done the uh, MRI. It had shown features suggestive of myositis. We did a CCT abdomen thorax as a part of screening for any malignancy and prior to initiation of uh, Anti, I mean, immunosuppressive therapy. No evidence of any suspicious uh, so solid visceral organs was seen in the CCT abdomen thorax. We had uh, we went ahead and did a muscle biopsy, and we had also sent antibodies for uh, myositis. Both HMV CR and anti SRP were negative. Myositis profile were also negative, but the my uh, muscle biopsy had shown evidence of myofibrin necrosis, myophagocytosis, and uh, degenerative activity. One thing I'd like to mention here is he had already received some amount of uh, treatment before he had arrived to us. He had already received uh, oral steroids, methotrexate, and uh, one dose, one or two doses of pulse, methylprednisolone pulse also prior to us, uh, towards he came to us. So idiopathic inflammatory myopathy. So just a brief summary, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, sporadic inclusion, and necrotizing autoimmune uh, myopathy. Uh, Diagnostic criteria, uh, Bohan and Peter criteria is usually used, symmetrical weakness of limb girdle muscles, elevated muscle enzymes, myopathy and EMG, muscle biopsy which shows evidence for inflammation and skin rash in case of dermatomyositis. Uh, management wise, I just want to put in a word here is uh, as per the 2022 British uh, Society of Rheumatology. So the current adult specific recommendation is high dose glucocorticoids for active muscle inflammation and pain. So a prednisolone oral uh, we can be uh, one mg per kg can be given or I will, uh, IV methyl prednisolone can also be offered. Oral should be tapered as 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 soon as the patient shows uh, clinical response. Slowly, slowly oral uh, prednisolone can be tapered. Usually over six weeks time is uh, what they have written. IVIG can be considered. IVIG and uh, IVIG rituximab, cyclophosphamide and abatacept can be considered for severe and refractory uh, diseases for uh, maintenance of remission, methotrexate, uh, estiaprent, acrylamus and cyclosporin or MMF can also be used. Uh, routine assessment, other things to be done for the, such patients is routine assessment for dysphagia and screening for cardiac involvement with ECG, echogram, echocardiogram and uh, cardiac enzymes. Risk of cancer in such patients should be considered and screening should be done for those with risk factors, especially male gender, dysphagia, older, onset, older age at onset, cutaneous necrosis, rapid onset disease and uh, resistance to immunosuppressive therapy. Um, Autoantibody titers should not be used for any disease activity monitoring. Uh, in uh, coming to our patient, uh, so he had a zero negative inflammatory necrotizing myositis. Initially, he was given methylprednisolone pulse with no response or minimal response. Hence, IVIG was uh, given. After the IVIG, there was significant improvement in both pain and also the uh, power. He was able to walk and his pain has significantly come down, though he still has some amount of residual difficulty to swallow. He's still on an NG tube. Multidisciplinary teams were involved in the care of this patient, ENT, gastroenterology, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, PMR and rheumatology, which is also a part of the recommendation of the British uh, Society of Rheumatology that both he needs a physiotherapy and a occupational therapy who will design a specific exercise for such patients. He is also planned to be started on steroid sp sparing agents. Astyapran is what we are planning to start him on. Uh, so learning points were approach to weakness and also uh, management of uh, idiopathic inflammatory. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We move on to the last presentation.